Hello and welcome to this battle ready orc tutorial in which we'll be creating this very battered, bedraggled, grimdark orc you see before you. Uh, in this tutorial we'll be using an airbrush, we'll be using a brush and we'll be using oils more importantly. That's where the magic stage really happens, bringing this model to life. Now this paint scheme has been designed to be painted within 15 minutes. So each orc boy will take around 15 minutes and will be able to grow your clan in no time flat. Let's dive straight into the chaos, shall we? The very first thing we do is add a layer of hairspray over a miniature that's been given the black undercoat, and then given a red undercoat of deep red. So this is airbrushed over the entirety of the miniature. Scurvy green and foul green are the bases of our, of our paint job. Scurvy green is applied into the airbrush first using two parts thinner to one part paint so it is a relatively uh, thin mixture this is airbrushed at a 45 degree angle catching the majority of the muscle structure so if we can say that the muscle structure is volumes the volumes we are trying to capture around 90 percent we only want to keep the shadow that dark red in the very darkest recesses of the miniature why the hairspray I hear you I hear you cry it's a very good question and it will be answered in due course but there's a vital component. And for the hairspray, the stronger the better. I use silver crin, which is available in the UK. However, uh, if you're in Canada, if you're in America, if you're in Zimbabwe, if you're watching this in Zimbabwe, how are you doing? You may not have access to that particular brand. I've found rough rule of thumb, stronger hairspray, the better. Two thin, even coats are applied over the majority of the skin tone and the muscle structure. We don't need to be too neat at this point if a little bit of paint overlaps that's fine in fact the airbrushing layers we don't use any masking we don't use any uh, tricks it is quite well it's not the neatest of paint jobs it doesn't need to be this has been designed for speed okay next up foul green that's the lighter green is applied at an even more oblique angle to express the volumes even further so what the hell does that mean well it's a fancy way of saying we are highlighting what we've just done. So you can see the airbrush is put at a more oblique angle. We're running the airbrush at 20 PSI. That does not change during the course of this tutorial. We rely on trigger control to give us the manipulation we are looking for. Or at least I certainly do. However, if you do feel more comfortable with increasing the PSI pressure and decreasing it, please feel free to. If you want more exact um, tonal transitions, try and increase the uh, PSI. If you want a softer blend, decrease the uh, PSI of your airbrush. Okay, next up we are adding field grey and you can see there's a little bit of uh, the previous colour left behind. When using transitions I always try to leave a small amount of the previous layer so when we build it up uh, we get nice transitions rather than shocking ones. Okay, field grey uh, from scale 75 this is the war front range uh, there are two field grays in the in the uh, in their catalog they look indistinguishable from one another so I if you buy either of them you're on good ground uh, again we are looking at one part paint to two parts thinner when we airbrush this out it should leave a very strong layer behind but we should still be able to see the underlying layer we're airbrushing on top of so it's not an instant transition the last thing we want to do is to add a big thick gollop of paint blast through the over uh, underlying layers that we've applied and just completely neutralize the work we've done so far this again is added at an oblique angle the same as the previous green and this helps just neutralize things I found I wasn't getting really the uh, punch I wanted so a uh, golden skin is added to the mixture and it creates this very light feel, grey feel, drab olive effect. Again, we are looking, uh, in this case, we are looking at two parts paint to one part thinner. I haven't applied any more thinner to the base, but it's still very thin. It still uh, leaves a, a trace behind rather than a big, strong transition. Again, we are airbrushing directly below, trying to build up in a zenithal pattern. So all our highlighting and shading will be done with a real, a look to a realistic cue. This style of painting is much more realistic in nature. I, the way I paint, I want to give a snapshot of the 41st millennium. I want you to feel like a field reporter. I want to feel like you're actually there. 
So they're highlighting the shading schemes. They'll be uh, with an eye to, to a more natural highlighting scheme in mind. Not everything is edge highlighted. Because in nature, when you look at, around you, when you look at your muscle structure, there are very few hard edges to pin your hat onto. Okay, to begin, uh, this will be a yellow moons? Bad, no, bad moons, bad moons, I'm sorry, I'm not a big orc, orc guy. Um, but this is painted as a favour to, uh, to a student uh, who wanted to see a scheme for his army. And I really needed orcs for the channel. Okay, scr one of my favouritely named paint scrofulous brown so we have a complete change with the airbrush scrofulous brown is added to the airbrush two parts paint to one part thinner and pay attention to the angle at which i uh, use the airbrush i'm pointing it away from the skin that we've developed so far so even though we're not masking anything off the slight overspill onto the skin will look natural because when you look at the scrofulous brown look how much yellow is included any overspill that we'll get onto the skin will just make it look more natural. Try your best to be as neat as possible though. Uh, airbrush any area of the armour that you want to be yellow. And this is why we have included that hairspray stage right at the beginning. Because when we chip up this yellow it will look amazing. Or hopefully it will look amazing. Okay, next up, Sol Yellow from Scale 75 is applied into the airbrush. One part paint to one part thinner is an even ratio. Now with the Sol Yellow, it is quite a, th a thin paint. It is quite, um, it's quite a lot of thinner already in the paint. So if you need to thicken it up slightly more, please feel free to. But I found a rough ratio of one to one does the trick, does the job. And again, this is uh, life color thinner. Okay, I'm airbrushing directly downward. And I am letting this slip over onto the face and the uh, arms. Oh, bit of a spill there. Uh, I'm using the Redgrass Games uh, miniature holder. It's barely holding in there. And you can see that pop you get with the Sol Yellow. Again, it's overlapping onto the skin. What on earth am I doing? It looks very strong right now, that overlap under the skin, incredibly strong, but you'll be surprised when we start adding the oils. Yep, that's right, you heard me, we're adding oils, oil paints to this. And when we start uh, weathering up the miniature, it'll be surprising just how much that calms down, that cools down, that tones down. Okay, and there we are after the airbrush staging. One last thing to do with the airbrush. Take pure water <clears throat> you get from your tap. If you live in a hard water area, boil boil the water first. Uh, have it cool going through your airbrush. Don't use boiling water on this. And we airbrush it, pure water, over the entirety of the miniature. What this will do is soften the underlying hairspray layer and allow us to chip. And weirdly enough, it helps the blends, it helps the transitions. The green of the skin bleeds through to the yellow that we've used so far. It tones everything down. Excuse me. Right, so taking a variety of different materials. So this cleaning chuck, this cleaning key, was given to me alongside the airbrush that I bought. And it has very, very stiff nylon bristles. I use them in a stabbing motion to remove a few paint, a few paint chips. Uh, I use a file on the hard edges of the armor plate, drawing it lightly across to uh, pick out any uh, individual flakes, details. It just creates this really nice chipping effect. Go easily, go steadily. Even though you'll be painting this across, what, like 30 boys at a time, it is an incredibly enjoyable experience. Because you're telling a story. All weathering tells a story. How did that chip get there? Is that a bullet mark? Is that rust? Etc. So when you, it, it's very easy to lose time building these techniques and, and undergoing this process, but it is one of the most enjoyable portions of the painting process. Uh, I'm not being too kind on this miniature, I'm really jamming it in there, I'm lightly drawing it across there, I'm jamming it in there, I'm poking, I'm, I'm prodding. Uh, yeah, in, 
use a variety of different materials to try and create different uh, scratches. In this case, I'm using a file and the cleaning key from my airbrush. But you can use very stiff bristle brushes. Uh, you, can, you can even use like bits of wood that you have lying around, bits of bark and stick, your nail, anything hard edged to produce a uh, chipped appearance. Uh, so I've got a small piece of uh, kitchen towel there that I'm lightly dabbing against the surface of the miniature. You can see I've ended up with a really big chip there, but instead of shying away from it, I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to steer into the into, into the crash, uh, and I can use some really nice uh, oil weathering effects later on to express it. Again, with this stage, there are no accidents, just happy um, accidents. That works, right? You could do this on any kind of armor plate that you own, Space Marines, um, anything that's that could that has been painted and needs to be chipped up. Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Tau, what other armored things are in the 41st millennium? El Elder? Mm -hmm. Does Wraithbone? I need to do a video on that. Does Wraithbone weather? Okay, Iroko and Sandalwood are added to our Red Grass Games web palette. Yep, I am spon sponsored by them. And they're a good product. If you haven't got one already, you should consider buying one. I wish I earned money off that. Okay, Rhinox Hide is also <laughs> mixed in. <laughs> uh, the advertisement face. Uh, right, a bit of uh, Rhinox Hide is added to uh, the Iroko. If you have a light brown in your collection, I, I have the colours there in front of me, colour mixing and matching. Um, if you want consistency across an orc army, you're painting the wrong army. Each boy should have a slightly different item of clothing. It's the, uh, I guess, the tribe colour or symbol that unifies them. The yellow unifies them. It's not their trousers. It's not the kind of uh, shirt that they have on. It's it's not the weaponry itself. No, it's that colour. It's that yellow colour that unifies them. Aim to have variation across your army. It will help the painting process. When you're painting so many of these guys, it will help your sanity. As well as making them look a lot more natural as well. Because if they, I guess, goths have more of an ordered system, maybe a, a uniform. Okay, th uh, the black I'm using is Thamar Black. Uh, it's from a Formula P3. Phenomenal colour. I can also recommend the Scale 75 Art Black. Um, I, I like the Vallejo uh, model colour black, but those are my preferences. Uh, Formula P3 and the Scale 75 Art Black, if you're looking for alternatives. Right, uh, um, I've made a, a, a dark orange, so this is Mars orange plus Rhinox hide, which I've really badly misspelled on the screen. Uh, and that's applied over the entirety of the trousers, or the pants. Pants and trousers, two very different things, depending on where you are in the world. Again, a simple, single base layer, doesn't need to be anything complicated, anything fancy, we just need a solid foundation of colour. The oil paints will do so much for us in the later stages. Magnesium from Vallejo model color range, or no, the metal color range. So the ones in the really big bottles, really interesting colors. Designed for airbrush, but can be used with brushes, uh, are applied to all the metallic areas. No gold is used, no fancy filigree. Uh, everything is, is very base material. Deep red from scale 75 is dotted into the eyes, and that is it. Okay, the oil stage. This is where it all transforms. This is the magic stage. We have Viridian by uh, Windsor Newton, Lamp Black by Dale Rowney, Cobalt Violet by Dale Rowney, and Burnt Sienna from uh, Dale Rowney, again, are applied to a piece of uh, tin foil. then Sans Door Thinner is applied. Uh, I was in a bit of a rush to get this tutorial done, uh, so that's why it's not in my usual palette. But if you just have a spare bit of anything lying by, it will suffice. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is a stain. Now an oil stain is a rather thick application of oil paint across the metallics, the trousers, the uh, shirt, any area where we want to change the underlying hue of the colour. So let's see the mixture. We have burnt sienna and black. Perfect for clothing. Uh, well, this particular clothing because it's brown and the metallics. It will give them, and the teeth as well. You can see how it really stains that layer. Now with oil paints you have roughly 12 hours before it becomes unusable, before you can't manipulate it any further. So you, 
you'd have to work exceptionally hard to mess things up at this stage. Oil paints are wonderful to use. They will become your new best friend if you've never tried them before. Hopefully they will. But make sure that the oil paint you buy is actually oil-based. Uh, I know a lot of manufacturers make water-based oil paints, so it, it's oil paints that react very similarly, but you can cut them with water. Make sure it's oil-based, and make sure you're using Sansador oil, low odor thinner. Don't buy the thinner that's water soluble. So a couple of tips there. Again, the old adage, water and oil do not mix. And don't use your best brushes for this either. Uh, so this is an old Klinsky sable hair that's coming to the end of its life. Uh, anything with a point, uh, any synthetic, so the cheaper the better really with oil paints. As long as it maintains a point for a few sessions, you can get away with buying cheap. And how often are you told that in this hobby? You can buy cheap well. Music to my ears. Okay, Viridian is used next. So I'm adding a pinch of brown to it. And this will be applied into the skin. Now, varnish has not been applied to the miniature in this case. Why? Well, we apply gloss varnish to make the paint more predictable in where it flows. It's often used in military scale modeling because we want very precise lines. It's used as pin washing to define the lines of a miniature or oil glazing. With this miniature, I want that bleed through. I want it, the, the skin to look organic and somewhat, met, dare I say it, messy. Because when you look at skin, it's not it's not neat. It's it's punctuated by all sorts of scars and, and birthmarks and I'm looking at my arm right now, it's not a pleasant experience. And that's what you want to generate with your orcs. Okay, for the uh, metallics, we have added a uh, more burnt sienna to the black mixture. I'm adding dots to then be pulled down as oil streaks, or staining or rust streaks. All manner of dirt and detritus and horribleness splattered up against this orc, and he's wading through the misery of the 41st millennium. Oh, I guess joy. They're, they're very joyful people, I guess. So I'm just adding a few dots here and there, and then I'm removing any excess paint from my brush, and this is with a clean, dry brush, there's no thinner on it whatsoever, and I'm teasing the paintbrush down, I'm teasing the oil down. Now unfortunately the camera did decide to have the oils in the background in perfect focus, but the orc itself slightly blurry. However you can make out the brush stroke and the, the uh, pull of the, uh, of the oil paint. So apologies for, apologies because my camera is an idiot. Yep, that's right. I'm blaming my, I'm blaming my tools. Stupid camera, can't focus. I don't know what accent I was doing then. If you have that accent, I, I apologize profusely. Right. Okay, so I'm just dragging some of that oil down to create that beautiful mixture. Okay, next stage, we allow this to dry for around three hours. We take a Q-tip, we gently roll it over the surface of the miniature to remove excess paint, and voila! Orc! That's it. It's done. We have a beautiful orc boy, ready to ravage the 41st millennium, and here he is in all his glory. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's very much counterpoint to the usual character commissions and character level tutorials we do on this uh, channel. However, you need that lemon sorbet, right? You need that palette cleanser. And if you are painting orcs, like uh, a few of my students are, you need a, you you can't spend three hours per boy. You will never finish an army. So just like with the Krieg tutorials and the painting the legions tutorials, this is for battle ready. Uh, orcs. Hope, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I get the opportunity to do something a little bit more involved. Maybe with the bust, maybe with Gazgul, Thraka. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Uh, be it a Tyranid, be it uh, Orcs, be it Tau skin. Whatever. It's your channel. You tell me what you want me to paint. I'll paint it for you. Right, until next time. Bye bye